started. Let me see. Oh, I guess somebody said something in the chat, but it'll be okay. Alrighty. Okay, so I have everybody on this side. Alrighty. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. If you will, please um, just mute yourself. You know, we have to go through these um, rules just to make sure there's no disruption during the uh, presentation. Um, but I want to say good evening. Thank you all for joining us. This is our first event of the year. So on behalf of myself, Shahiwa Jared and the our board, I want to wish you a happy new year. We are still saying happy new year because as our speaker said, we are just happy we made it out of 2020 <laughs> at this point. And we're looking forward to a, a prosperous year, um, a year of blessings and a year where we were actively hunting and being assertive with the opportunities that are out there. And as you know, here at the Broward County uh, Black Chamber, um, our members um, are in Palm Beach, they're in Miami, as well as in Broward. And um, we look to make sure we bring you each opportunity, no matter way, where it is, um, whether it's local or somewhere um, in the state or out of the state. And so today, I'm extremely happy to um, introduce to you our speaker for our very first event. So he's very, very special. As we continue our focus on uh, procurement um, with the city of West Palm Beach, our speaker tonight is Mr. Frank Hayden, who is the director of the Office of Equal Opportunity with the city of West Palm Beach. And he has a very long uh, bio, and, but I wanna highlight a few things because we're talking with, and we have a featured speaker that's very experienced in what he's doing. So um, Mr. Hayden is from Detroit and came on down to Palm Beach County. He has spent his entire professional career uh, creating opportunities for people who sought an equal opportunity to compete. As a director of the new Office of Equal Opportunity, Mr. Hayden continues to create programs designed to ensure equality and fair business practices within the city of West Palm Beach. Now, prior to his position, Mr. Hayden was the procurement director for the city of West Palm Beach. So he has a wealth of knowledge um, here. and We're happy about that. He was responsible for the team that managed purchasing for goods and services, commodities, construction, and professional services. He led the growth of the city's small business enterprise program. And under his guidance, the city adopted the recommendations of a disparity study, which included the creation of a minority and women owned business enterprise program that was launched in April of 2019. So as you can see, he's very, very busy. Um, so we're just happy to have Mr. Hayden here and I'm gonna turn it over to him uh, for his presentation. So please welcome in our, our virtual hand clap <laughs> as we welcome our speaker tonight, uh, Mr. Frank Hayden. Thank you for joining us, Frank. Uh, thank you for ha having me. Uh, it is a true pleasure uh, to speak to you um, today especially if I'm the first one out of the box, this is gonna set a good precedent for what your year is gonna be like uh, down there. Uh, I understand you're gonna be operating the slides. Okay. All right, so uh, Sharon's already told you uh, a little bit of, about me and uh, where I'm from. Uh, I should tell you, uh, my title has changed again. I told the mayor just the other day, every seems like every day or every week he gives me a new title. So we're now the Office of Economic Opportunity, uh, which is, is still fine with us. It all still fits in with us providing and creating opportunities for um, minority and women-owned business. So we're ready now. Let me tell you about how you do business with the city of West Palm Beach. So that just kind of tells you what it is. Uh, so the procurement 
Division is responsible for procurement of goods and services, construction of the highest quality at the most reasonable cost. The responsibilities include uh, doing solicitations, those are bids, proposals, and quotes, doing contract, and also doing purchase orders. The laws and regulations, the authority that allows us to procure is uh, section 6632, which is the authority and duties of the procurement official. Uh, the procurement governance, uh, there's a procurement code. Uh, we also function under the Florida statutes and Florida law, uh, the US code, the office of management and budget, and also the uniform commercial code. How we do uh, procurement are we do informal purchases. That is things under $50,000 we can do quotes for. Uh, for $10,000 and less, we'll, can only, we only have to do one quote. For between 10,000 and 25,000, uh, then we would ask that you do a minimum of two quotes. And anything from 25 up to 50, we'd expect you to do uh, at least three quotes for that. For formal uh, purchases over 50,000, we have to do uh, formal competitive either bids or proposals. For non-competitive contracts, though, we can do piggybacks or we can do it off of state term contracts. And let's tell you, I am not a big proponent of piggyback contracting. And the reason that is, is because I'm not always sure that other entities take the same responsibility that we do to ensure that it was a fair and honest uh, competitive process. Um, state term contracts, uh, we, we, we do utilize those. And I do use piggybacks, but I, I may let you know, I take them through a, a number of hoops to ensure that it was done competitively and that uh, a lot of people got an opportunity to participate. What we procure for goods and services, utility and infrastructure, water management, roadways, community events, our libraries, our parks and recreation, creative arts, special events and training. And so we procure all of those services for the various departments within the city of West Palm Beach. One of the things that I always tell uh, vendors who are interested in doing business with the city or anywhere, uh, that include down in Broward or um, anywhere else. And and that is, does, does your firm have the required certifications? A lot of firms don't realize that in order to uh, do engineering work, you have to have a certification to be able to perform that task, uh, whether or not your firm has the necessary experience. And as you know, a lot of times that is a holdback and a, a piece for uh, small businesses. A lot of times they don't want to give them an opportunity because they haven't had the necessary experience. But as you listen to small businesses, their, their response is, how am I ever going to get the experience if you never give me an opportunity? And so I'll talk to you a little bit of, later about a program we have uh, that enables them to be able to do that. Uh, the other thing, does your firm have the capacity to take on new work? You know, a lot of times what we find is, um, when, when small businesses, minority owned firms, um, they get a project and then something else comes up and they want to take on that project. And what it, what it ends up doing is, is that it, it, it draws them through too thin. And so they're not doing a good job on either project. And they will use that as a rationale or an excuse not to give you any more work because you didn't perform too well. Um, does your firm have financial stability and, and the insurance? Once again, a lot of times what we've found is firms don't necessarily understand that just because you win a project, 
you need money to be able to perform on that project. The other thing that they don't understand a lot of times is, is that you've got to have insurance covered to ensure uh, your workers on the job and to ensure the city so that if any damage comes about, uh, your insurance will cover that. We also ask folks to get certified with us. As, as was mentioned, we have an M slash WBE program. Uh, we had a dispar disparity study that was done um, that uh, determined that what we already knew, that there was a disparity in terms of African-Americans and Hispanics and other minorities of getting uh, opportunity. So we also have an SBE program that's been in existence for a number of years. And you can register with the city as a provider of goods and services as either an SBE or an M slash WBE. We have professional consultants can be pre-qualified for a specific city projects. Uh, that's architectural, engineering, landscape, mapping, and survey. And you know, uh, those uh, categories come under uh, CCNA, which is the Competitive uh, Consultant Negotiation Act. Um, we just recently went out for our general engineering services contract, where we received a little over 80 firms who, who submitted proposals. We are still in the process of evaluating those. And in the end, we'll probably end up with somewhere between 20 to 30 firms that we'll end up giving contracts for. And that way we'll have on board those consultants who will be able to provide these services for us. Most of the info that we've talked about, solicitations are advertised, it's either on our city website or the Palm Beach Post or trade publication. They're also available on Demand Star, um, where we list all of the uh, solicitations that we're gonna have out for folks, folks to take advantage of. One of the things that I tell uh, vendors on, on an ongoing basis. You need to know what's going on in the city. And what I mean by that is, what kind of projects is the city looking to do in the future? Uh, who are the people within the city you need to get to know uh, in order to get a heads up? Because what we found is a lot of times, um, by the time a small business or a minority owned business finds out about a project, it's already been let to a prime contractor. Or by the time they find out about the, the project, the prime contractor has already identified who their subs are going to be. So what we do at the city, uh, we have something we call a B2B, a business to business, where we'll invite in a new firm, whether they're small or large, who is not uh, done business with us, and we'll have them come in and do a presentation to the project managers who could utilize their services. So that at least our, our engineers get to know who they are and they have a chance to kind of ask the kind of question about uh, what they do, how they do it and what services they can provide. Uh, the other thing is be creative. Uh, share with us how you can do whatever we're requesting better than uh, what we have proposed or make some creative suggestion of some ideas that we didn't have that might make it a lot easier. And be the solution. Can you fulfill a need? In other words, um, what I tell folks on a regular basis, if, if, if you could be the best at what you do, you could be the best bricklayer, the best whatever, but if we don't know anything about you, then I can't do anything to assist you. So you've got to let us know who you are and what it is that you do. And the other thing is our doors are always open. I mean, we've changed our philosophy now because of the COVID, but uh, we still do our Zoom meetings and our outreaches to let people know about opportunities within the city and to give them an opportunity to talk to us about what it is that they have to offer for us.
So just let me know that was a very quick and short presentation, but let me let me just share with you. We I like to think that we have one of the best SBEs and MBE programs in the state of Florida. And I don't mind saying that because we we work very hard to ensure that people who look like us uh, get a fair shot. We have a sheltered market program with the city of West Palm Beach. And what that means is um, for any project that's less than a half a million dollars, then we can shelter that so that only certified SBEs can propose on that work. Um, and to date, uh, and the other thing I should tell you too, I'm sorry, is in order for us to shelter a project, we have to have a minimum of three firms who can, pro pro can provide that service for us. If I can't, if I don't have three, I can't shelter it. And even after I shelter it, if the bid that comes back in is not beneficial to the city or it's not the best value for the city, then we'll reject that bid and then put it out for a competitive bid because we don't want a situation where uh, people are saying that we only sheltered work and we're paying a high price just so we give an opportunity to um, uh, small businesses. That program in my mind has been uh, quite successful uh, over the last year, three years. I think we've done pretty close to about $5 million in, in sheltered market projects. For our SBE programs, uh, which we have a 15% participation on our solicitations, whether they are uh, bids or proposals, uh, we have generated, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm sure Sandy will correct me on this, we've generated over the last, last year uh, roughly about $18 million that we've been able to generate for SBE. So we are very aggressive and what we do and how we go about it. And as I told your, your chair, um, we welcome, our doors are open, uh, come on down. I'd like to, much to like the minister in church says, you know, the doors of the city are wide open, come on. Uh, we can share our money with you because, you know, as you know, um, the border is just a, 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 a line. And uh, if you have services you can provide, bring them to us, uh, and we're going to be more than happy to accommodate you. And if there's anything that Sandy and I can do to assist you and to help you and to give you more information about what's going on within the city, uh, you can go to our website and you'll find us listed there and uh, give us a call and we'll do our best to assist you. Uh, th thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, Frank, for that um, presentation. Um, I want to follow up on something that you said, and then we'll take questions from uh, some of the um, participants tonight. Um, I like the fact that you talked about the B2B, that you allow businesses to come in and do presentations with some of the directors or people in charge of a project. Um, that's absolutely, absolutely, as you know, because you you've know, given this space for so long. Um, it's critical because a lot of small business owners don't have access to the decision makers and people working on those projects. So how, how can one go about making that happen? How can a business owner go about making one of those meetings happen? Well, it, all they have to do is just reach out to myself or to Sandy. Okay. Uh, and it, it has become very difficult now because of the COVID. Um, but uh, we have outreach events, as you mentioned earlier, we have one coming up on February 17th, which is, which is going to be a Zoom event. Uh, and we normally, and this, this is not bragging, but I am, we normally have about 100 people who are participate in our Zoom meeting uh, yes. and our outreach event. But if someone will reach out to us, uh, to Sandy or myself, uh, then we will do all we can to open those doors to make that happen. I mean, we've had a situation where a, a young lady who was an engineer had an engineering firm. Uh, we had her come in and do what I like to say is our song and dance. And our folks, the engineers who were there, who were so impressed with her, they ended up hiring her to come work for the city uh, in the engineering department. So it does have its benefits. Um, 
Because the other thing too is, like you were saying, a lot of small businesses don't have time to go out and market for work. They're too busy working. You know, big firms, they have someone, that's their whole job is to market uh, for opportunity. So we like to think that we're the marketing arm for small businesses or minority owned firms that we're able to open the doors for them. Because when they submit a bid, uh, our engineers uh, normally look for names of companies that they know and are familiar with. And what I've tried to get them to do is uh, look sometime beyond the name and look for the qualifications that the ne- company has submitted because these other companies who have been around a while, somebody gave them a break one time in their, their business career. And so we have to do that to help out these other firms as well. No, you are absolutely, no, you uh, are absolutely. correct, um, Frank. And it's that big break in giving that small business owner the chance that's so uh, critical. Um, I have one other question and then I'm gonna see if anyone else has a question. Um, you mentioned uh, getting certified. And so I wanted to know if um, you're having virtual appointments, you know, to walk people through the process or if they have questions, um, how, is, how is that being done, you know, considering the pandemic or are you all open and allowing people to come in uh, and kind of have one-on-ones um, through that process? Uh, most of the time it's being done uh, virtual. Um, our process, um, is is like a one pager. Okay. Um, we also okay. <laughs> we also do a reciprocal uh, agreements with uh, Palm Beach County uh, with the Palm Beach County school system and the like. And so, if you have been certified with them, uh, there's a document you can bring over to us that uh, verifies that that is the case, and then uh, you automatically then become certified with us as well. So that kind of cuts down on on a lot of paperwork and a lot of effort. But the answer to your question is, yes, we'll do it virtual, but if you just need to have a sit down, then we can arrange uh, that uh, uh, we can get you in the building, keep our six feet distance from you and be masked up, but then we'll help walk you through it to get, get you to the point that you, uh, uh, paperwork is filled out. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. At this time, At this if, time- if you are participating in the meeting and you have a question, um, please raise your hand. I'm going to try to see if I can look at the participants um, so I can see who has yeah. a question and I can unmute you. Yeah. Okay. I guess the dog I had a question. I, okay, I guess. <laughs> I <can't. laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question, um, Shahiwe. Didn't see the hand raised tool. Oh, I did. Okay, go ahead, Dalia. You can go ahead. Um, I have a question. The continuation of Shahiwe's question. I would like to know, with the certification, um, what are the advantages? Is there any nurturing, anything like that, to support a small business that wants to grow and do business with you? With you. Um, the answer is, is, is yes and yes and yes. The first part you asked, uh, what's the benefit? Well, on, I talked about the shelter market program. If you're not certified, then you can't play in, in that arena. Uh, and that's beneficial because you're competing against people who are just like you on your same side. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I made the dollar threshold of below a half a million because big firms, it, it costs them more money than it's worth to go after projects of that size. But for smaller firms, I mean, that's getting your foot in the door so you'll be able to make some money. So that's one benefit. The other benefit is, is on all of our solicitations, whether they're for uh, proposals or if they're invitation to bid, there is a requirement that uh, the prime must serve uh, sub out 15% of that work to a certified SBE. Now, when the people submit their paperwork, the company has to be certified at that time. Uh, We have a very aggressive program in that uh, our compliance 
is to ensure that, as I like to say, if you bring this young lady to the dance, I expect you to spend some time dancing with them. I don't care if you see somebody else there who can dance better or looks better. We expect you to do that. And so that's the same philosophy we use that if, if you sign up an SBE on a project, then we are going to monitor it, monitor it from the beginning to the end to ensure that you were paying them the amount of money you indicated and that that person is actually physically on the job and, and doing what they need to do. The other piece that you asked about is if there's some support uh, to, make, uh, to help you along. We have a, a uh, relationship with three uh, banks, I call them local banks, in West Palm Beach, who have agreed that if a prime uh, or if an SBE gets a contract with the city of West Palm Beach, and they need some upfront capital to uh, get them to the first uh, paycheck they get from us, that they're willing to make uh, that capital available uh, to those individuals. We have programs, we've done programs with uh, Turner Construction, which is, I think it's about a six or eight week program where they take you, the contractors through how to fill out estimates, how to do their bookkeeping and all those sort of things. So the, that's why I said the answers to your questions are yes, yes, and yes. So lastly, why don't you give us a call, come on down, see if we can help you get some of that uh, West Palm Beach money. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I want some of that West Palm Beach money too. <laughs> okay, I see a hand up. Uh, Gina, go yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am a financial professional and I need to know if we need to be certified because, you know, as a financial professional, we can have uh, those. Uh, I hope that you have a bid for uh, disability, uh, for business solutions to bring to the city uh, or to others. How I can fit into your uh, procurement or I need to see somebody else, your human resources or something else? Okay. Well, um, all, all projects that we have do not require you to be certified. Uh, the certification brings you benefits as I was explaining before. So if you have a service that you can provide for our HR or some other department, um, you provide us with that information. We open the door to give you a chance to meet with our HR folks or whatever field, if it's finance, that you can provide some services. So you have a chance to work with them and talk to them because there are sometimes if the project or the cost of the service you're going to provide is below that $50,000 threshold that I talked about then it doesn't have to be done competitively. They can just uh, give you a $5,000 or $10,000 contract to perform those services. And so in that sense, it wouldn't require you to be certified at all. I'd still though keep talking to you about getting certified because if, once you're certified, that 5,000 and 10,000, I can count that toward my, my numbers of helping out small business. Uh, okay, <laughs> I see. thank you. I see. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> oh, you got to unmute yourself. Myself. Okay, I'm mute myself. All right, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, Frank. Um, I have a question in reference to um, contracts that are coming up. You probably you may have mentioned this in the beginning. I'm sorry, I had a problem logging on. So I came on. Did I do something? Hello? Yes, no, you're here. Me. We hear you. Oh, but can you see me? That's yeah, the I can problem. See you. Right? We, can, we can see you. you. Can, oh, okay. Don't right. All right. All right. Okay, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, I was saying that I logged on a little late, but I was wondering, um, you know, uh, you were mentioning your one-on-one, -on -one, and I, I just want to, um, you know, give a little bit about that, and then I'm going to have a question. I have a question for you. I had an opportunity through uh, um, actually a meeting, Shiva, that you set up with uh, your oh. CFO, Mark Parks. And ah. it, was, it, was, it was very, very good. I, I, oh, it was a good meeting because I said, see, Mark is from Cleveland, so I have no yes, control over those people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a great meeting. He spent a lot of time, very detailed. I think we were on the phone almost an hour. And it was and I got to know his background and he got to know my background and, you know, just really 
a very, very, um, you know, in-depth meeting about the process uh, of, at, the, at the city and how we can do more business. So uh, thank you very much for that. And um, the question, you know, was that we, we provide disaster services and staffing as well as um, staffing services in other areas, clerical, light industrial, uh, accounting, we're just kind of across the board. So how do we find out what opportunities are available um, through um, the city of West Palm Beach? Well, we have your, uh, we have your information. Is, is that correct? Yes, you do. Okay. So when those opportunities like that, which are, are, are not something we seek out on a regular basis, you know, it's not like every year we're going to be doing this. Right. So we right. would then, based on that, and we know what your need is, then we would send you the notice that we're looking for X amount of services and hoping to get you to do a response to us. But the, the other thing, aside from that is, is, uh, I've said this to people before when I'm out talking. Um, you need to make a pest of yourself. Uh, how long ago was this that you, uh, I set this meeting up with you and Mr. Park? Uh, that meeting was back in September. Okay, so that's too long. You you should have been blowing up our phones, wanting to know what's what's going on, why haven't you heard from us, and so forth. Uh, because if I tell people, if you make a pest of yourself, I'm going to try and give you some work so you'll stop calling me. You well, know? I'm the biggest well, pest the biggest there is, so you, know, you just open up a can of worms. I will definitely oh. be pestering you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll look forward to hearing from you again soon, All okay? Right. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. I want to let I you all know that um, before I see if anyone else has a question, um, that uh, Sandra here, Frank's trusty assistant here <laughs> and, and, and supporter here, is putting some gems in the chat. Um, she's put uh, Frank's contact information in the chat. Um, now, you she see, she didn't put her contact in, but she put mine in there. <laughs> she, uh, she, she also put... <laughs> um, a little information about the upcoming event you guys have, um, which I will send out. So members, you will get that in um, our email, uh, our email. So you'll know what uh, all about their, their event coming up on February 17th. And then she also put an upcoming procurement that closes out this month. And then she also um, put a link to the solicitations um, and bids link for the city. So um, click on that so you can, or copy and paste that so you can have that uh, information for your reference. Um, thank you, Sandra. That's that's really uh, good I information to help our, our um, attendees understand the opportunities. Did anyone else have a question before we, we close out tonight? I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Del, Celia Baker again. To, and then we'll go, well, oh, Dahlia, go ahead. And then we'll go to uh, Brenda uh, Mills. I see her hand is up, go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right, so my follow-up question is, um, for the primes that we might be able to join their team well, that you mentioned earlier in the presentation, is there like a mandatory pre-bid? Um, is How would we become aware of the bids that, that might be a good fit for us? Um, we don't have mandatory pre-bids, um, and, um, we talked about where we post, uh, our solicitations and, um, sometimes we send directly to the subs about, uh, solicitations that are coming out, uh, that, might require or might fit within what your needs are. 
I would suggest the, the best thing to do, and one of the links that I heard Sandy put on there is about the uh, uh, listing of solicitations that are coming up, uh, that you view that on a regular basis. Uh, as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, it, it, it's a good idea that maybe once a month uh, to either send a, a email or to pick up the phone and call and just say, is there uh, anything that is coming up that I might be interested in um, and so that we know? Because like I said, uh, once this uh, Zoom is over tonight, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not going to remember any of you other than, you know, the chairman of your, your committee. Uh, but that's, that's your responsibility to remind me that we talked on a Zoom call. You asked me to give you a call uh, because that tells me that you're interested. That tells me that you, 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 you're motivated and you want to do business. And for people like that, I go out of my way to uh, make that a reality. Very Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. We next have um, Brenda. Brenda, go ahead and uh, ask your question. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about how do you um, transition your, your transferable skills into the career of a procurement specialist to work mm. for the city? Oh. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> that's, that's a very interesting question. So let me let me take you back. I've been doing this for pretty close to 50 years now. And uh, when I first started out, I, I, I knew nothing about this. And that was back in eight, 1981. I was about to say 18 something, but then y'all would have hung up. Uh, so that was back in 1981. I started with uh, the Detroit Water and Sewage Department and uh, doing in contracts and, and grants department. And doing that for the period of time and learning that, it, it's, it, it showed me that it gave me an opportunity to be able to help people. And so if you have a passion for wanting to help other people and to provide opportunities for people, it's an easy transition to be able to go from one to the other. There are classes that are made available for people to learn how to do procurement. Folks who, who, when I was procurement director with the city, uh, people who came to work for me, I required them to have to take classes uh, on a regular basis. And these are not classes at universities and so forth. There are organizations out there that provide these procurement classes on a regular basis. There's a contract uh, uh, courses that are required that I'd send my staff uh, all over the country just to be able to take those classes. Because my philosophy is, see, I want you to know as much as you possibly can so that you can be successful. Because if I've got to tell you what to do, if I got to look over your shoulder all the time, I don't need you. So I want you to be at the point that you want to take my job, uh, which will never happen, but it's a good motivator for you to want to have anyway. So. I think it's something that if you have a passion for helping and wanting to help people, it is a great field to get into. And it is truly an easy transition um, to get into as well. Okay. Okay, thank you, okay, very, thank much. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for that, uh, Frank. I will just update you all. In addition to the link for upcoming bids and solicitations, uh, Sandra has now put in um, if you'd like to register uh, with the city of West Palm Beach, he's put that link in the chat. I, I need someone like Sandra. Frank. <laughs> I need someone like that, that, that was, listen, let me, let me tell you real quick. That, Sandra. Real, real quick. Sandra and I have been together. I started with the uh, uh, South Florida Water Management District in 2001. Oh, wow. And Sandra and I started together back then. I left there in 09, and then I was with the director of Sickle Cell, and she came and worked for me at, at the Sickle Cell Foundation. And then when I got the job with the city of West Palm Beach, she came to work with, for, with me then. Yeah. I could not function without Sandra. I'm just telling okay. you, all right? So. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. We need to duplicate her. Call yes, me yes. 
Um, I see that you, uh, she also dropped a link. Um, if you want to get certified, that's also in the chat. So that'll take you directly to the page where you can get certified. We have one more question before we um, try to wrap up here. Sherry, you have your hand up. You still have a uh, I, yeah, I do. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sherry. Girl from Detroit. Did, did she say guys? she's from Detroit? I think she did. <laughs> what what part of the city are you from? Yeah. <laughs> Southwest. You've met me many times before. Uh, I'm oh. Sherry Rudolph with Legally Clean. And, oh, yeah. Um, Hi, yeah, I think How the last time I, I saw you. Your connection is a little bad, Sherry. Maybe type your question in the chat, Sherry. We can't uh, hear you or understand you. I can't anyway. It, it, it's, in the, it's in the chat. Okay. It's in the chat. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. Hear you now. Now. Yeah, it is in the chat. All right. And it's good hearing you, hearing from you again, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, well. The question is in the chat. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I, I heard you. Let me, let me look for it. Um, I don't see any questions. One of the last ones. I see Brenda saying, thank you for the information on transition oh. to a career in procurement. Oh, Sherry, okay. She says, uh, she, she put it earlier in the chat. Um, she wants to know if there are any janitorial contracts coming up. And she says she's your home girl from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and this, I want everybody to know, if she's not getting any special treatment because she's from Detroit. But uh, we will, uh, uh, we currently have a, a contract with a janitorial for janitorial services with the city uh, but we are going to be going back out um, um, soon i would guess uh, maybe toward the end of the year uh, for a new solicitation uh, because we ran into some some issues with the current vendor that we have on board so um, send your information uh, shared to myself or Sandy. Uh, I think uh, Sandy put our, our contact information uh, up. So send it to us. And as soon as we know something permanent, we'll make sure you send that information out to you. Okay. Thank you. Great, Sherry. Glad he could answer your question. Um, okay. Mm. All right, so we will go. Um, I'm just looking to see if we have any more questions and then we'll, we'll uh, wrap up. I saw one about it, whether or not there was uh, a reciprocal, mm -hmm. yeah, for between Broward, Dade, and us. And currently we do not have one. Um, I, I'd be interested in having some discussion about how we could make that happen. Um, but uh, currently, we do not have any uh, reciprocal certification. Okay. 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 And maybe that's something that we maybe we that's something that we can a meeting and see if we can make that happen with their economic development department. That would be lovely. So yeah, ahead. I think it's something we can have a discussion on. I mean, uh, the ones we have uh, between the uh, county and school board. Those, you know, our legal people have looked at them and their legal people have looked at them and so forth. And so we'd have to jump through a few hoops, but I think it's, it, it's at least something we can have some discussion about. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, well, everyone, I, I hope you all enjoyed our um, discussion tonight. I think this is a perfect way to start the year, learning about new opportunities, in waters that you probably haven't chartered at this time uh, or before. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Frank Hayden um, for coming in. Another question in chat. Oh, you have another question? Okay. Go ahead and ask a question. 
Uh, I was looking at the RP for employee benefits, and uh, it seems like there's some restrictive language in there where it requires that you have three clients with 500 or more employees. Uh, I believe that's restrictive language and it, it harms small businesses that are looking for those type of opportunities. Uh, in contrast, Miami-Dade County has an RP right now and they don't have that restrictive language. All you have to do is be an independent um, consultant and be licensed with the state of Florida. Is it possible to remove that restrictive language? Yes, and, and I say yes. Um, uh, what I would suggest is uh, put something in writing as it relates to that, and we will, uh, uh, you know, ad address that with uh, the client who is looking for this service and also for our legal department. Uh, and we would make the argument based on what you have said, but in the end result, if, if the, uh, if the our client who would be the HR folk uh, feel very strongly about it, I mean we we can't force them to do that. But I think it's a legitimate concern that you raise, uh, and uh, I'm not saying that they wouldn't be amenable to it. Put it in writing. Let me run it up the flagpole, and we'll fight it and see what we can get as a result. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mr. Frank, I, may I have a question for you? Did Sugar you? Pie Vincent. Um, it, I'm, I'm here, so go ahead. <laughs> if, it's up to your chairwoman, so, but I'm, I'm here. Um, go ahead, Ben. Sandra or Frank, do you all um, certify roofing contractors? Ooh. Well, let me, we certify small and minority businesses. Hmm. Now, what your skill sets are, uh, our certification, if you're a small business on construction side, you cannot do more than 9 million accumulated over, over a three year period of time. For the MBE or WBE, it, it is simply, I don't care how much money you make as long as you fit the ethnic criteria. So uh, the answer to your question is, yes, we certify SBEs and MBEs who do construction work, who do roofing, who do paving, and all of those things. That answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes. I'll be in okay. contact with you. I'll all be in contact. Okay. All right, thank you. Hey, Vincent, glad to make that connection. <laughs> Let me stop. You probably knew, you probably knew Frank beforehand. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did, he did. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions um, at this time. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and, and wrap up. I, I just want to say thank you, Frank, for being our first one out the box in 2021. I love the numbers that you uh, reported to us. And it shows that you all are really working to make sure you get the small and, and minority businesses and black businesses in there uh, making money up in your city. And we appreciate that hard work. I also just wanna say um, thank you with regard to that half a million under sheltering the market because we fight for people to push that, that number up. It's always a hundred or 150,000 or even 250. And you know we, we wanna get it up to that half, half a million dollars. We're fighting for that in, in Broward as we speak with the county. Um, so thank you for your candor here. Thank you for providing your information so people can follow up with you. Uh, we appreciate your time. And Sandra, thank you for all that you do for keeping Frank uh, on his toes and getting him where he needs to be. Um, with that being said, everyone, have a wonderful night. We will send you a follow-up email um, regarding their event, uh, the City of West Palm Beach's event in February on the 21st. And we also have um, our uh, Black History Month events, et cetera. So make sure you're checking your emails. All right. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and mm -hmm. see you at the next event. Thank you so much, very much for having me. And Sandy, we truly do appreciate it. All yeah, right. No problem, Frank. Anytime. Right. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Good night, folks. Bye. Good night. Be safe. Good night.